Hey, good day, everyone. Bert Salazar here. Uh, welcome to another Cambridge uh, webcast. Uh, today, we're going to do an interesting one. And uh, this is the one uh, in reference to the difference uh, between a 15-year mortgage and a 30-year mortgage. And that has become, for many of us, the major uh, mortgage uh, dilemma that we have to deal with. Um, often enough, uh, I would say any time between two to three times um, a month, I get calls from clients, you know, wanting to find out a little bit more about mortgages. Does it make more sense to have a 15-year mortgage or a 30-year 30 30-year 30 mortgage? Uh, what are the interest rates? You know, any suggestions that I may provide regarding this, uh, this matter? So I thought it would be important uh, for me to do a short video on the difference between a 15-year and a 30-year mortgage. Uh, so with that being said, uh, I'm excited. So let me go ahead and uh, turn on my screen uh, so you can see it. And then let's get right into the presentation of the mortgage dilemma. All right, so I guess you can all see it. So just relax, take a few minutes. Uh, pay attention because this is going to help you tremendously as you start to make decisions in the future regarding uh, mortgages and how do they work and what are the benefits and the pros and the cons and so forth. So uh, obviously, you know, uh, having a home is, is, uh, has been known for the last 70 or, or 80 years as the American dream. Now you can accomplish and you can achieve the American dream in many different ways. But for many of us, you know, owning a home and, and living in a beautiful home, it's, it's paramount and is very critical for our future success and our lifestyle and so forth. So we're going to be discussing uh, mortgages uh, from a different perspective and perhaps one that many of you have not considered in the past, but I think is very, very important to review uh, and be able to discuss. Uh, now, thought of the day, you know, many years ago, uh, Donald Trump uh, wrote a book, uh, and he said something very interesting, and it was pretty funny at that point in time, but it makes a lot of sense. And he said that, you know, if you owe, if you owe a bank a uh, million dollars and you have a problem, but if you owe them a hundred million dollars, they have the problem. And I think that's very feasible, especially, you know, with what went on in 2008, 2009, uh, with the market and the real estate debacle, and, and obviously what happened uh, in early 2000 as well. So we have had um, a lot of market, um, a lot of bull markets, a lot of bear markets. We have real estate bull, bull markets, and we have also um, uh, have had to deal with uh, real estate bear markets along those lines. So, you know, when making financial decisions that may be 15, 20, 25, 30 years uh, down the line, you have to have a lot of flexibility in what you do because markets and situations are always changing. You know, I heard this many, many years ago, and I'm a true believer uh, on that. Um, methods are many and, and principles are few. Uh, methods are always changing, yet principles never do. So the principles of economics when it comes to making financial decisions is very, very critical uh, to all of us that are on this webcast and for you know most Americans uh, in the marketplace. Now, uh, let's talk a little bit about the dilemma. And the dilemma with the mortgage has always been, you know, does it make sense for me to, to have a 15-year mortgage or a 30-year mortgage? Uh, does it make sense for me? And we're not going to talk about interest rate, uh, interest only mortgages, but uh, you know, the big question there is, well, what's better, a hammer or a screwdriver? And the answer is it depends. It truly depends on your personal situation. And obviously we're going to look at some of the things that would be very important for you to consider as you move forward in, in, in attempting uh, to make a mortgage uh, decision for yourself and for your family as well. Uh, number one is, you know, what is the APR? What is the, the interest rate uh, for, the, for the mortgage that you want to acquire uh, at any given point in time? Now, interest rate, uh, interest rate fluctuate over the last 10 years. Interest rates in the United States have been fairly low because the federal, the federal government and the Treasury have done a really good job in depressing those interest rates 
um, but it's not what the market demands is basically that the government uh, is depressing the, the interest rates. So we have had, uh, because of that, a faster uh, growth uh, in the economy. And that has been one of the components for that faster growth. Now the credit rating. You know, if you're the purchaser, what is your credit rating? You know, what at, uh, what's your FICO score? Um, and how do you determine that? And uh, have you done your due diligence, you know, prior to purchasing your property to make certain that you give yourself plenty of time to in increase your credit score in order to get a better, better mortgage uh, for yourself and your family? Uh, what is the property value? Uh, what is the condition of the property? Are you going to have to put additional funds in order to fix the property or bring the property up to code uh, depending on the circumstances? So those are things that need to be taken into consideration when you're designing your mortgage uh, payment program. Now, property location, where is a property located? Uh, is the value of properties in the adjacent area are they uh, in an upward mobility or are they in a downward mobility? So you have to not just look at your specific property and perhaps even not even your immediate neighborhood, but you have to go further than that. You know, what are some of the things that may be happening in that area? Uh, is there going to be any major construction coming in? Is there going to be any uh, commercial uh, places that are going to be built uh, in the next few years in your area, schools, um, uh, post offices, uh, shopping centers, you know, all those things, uh, medical facilities, all those things are going to play a major role in making the decision whether a 15 year mortgage may be better than a 30 year mortgage. Now, I would argue that the vast majority of Americans uh, that are looking at entering into a mortgage program are only looking at pricing. But there's so many other components that are very critical to understand along those lines. Now, propensity to consume. You know, sometimes um, uh, property buyers are, are savers, sometimes they're spenders. And, and that's, gonna make it, uh, that's gonna make a big difference as to which type of mortgage uh, you should choose uh, if you happen to be on one side of the ledger or the other. Uh, the other issue is, you know, how committed or how involved um, is the property uh, purchaser uh, to a savings program? And, and when, I, when I use the analogy of, you know, commi being committed and being involved, you know, many of, clients say, many of my clients say to me, Bert, you know, what's really the difference between being committed and being involved? So I, I like to use a simple, funny analogy that I think will bring the point home. You know, I think most of us on this call and on this uh, web webcast, and those of you that are going to be watching this video afterwards, you know, have probably had uh, bacon and eggs uh, for breakfast. Now, if I'm going to use the same analogy, you know, the chicken was involved, but the pig was committed. So, uh, in other words, you have to be fully committed to a savings program if you're going to decide uh, over, uh, over a 30-year mortgage versus a 15-year mortgage. And I'll explain that uh, in, in more detail in the next few slides. Uh, understanding of economic principles. Uh, you would be surprised. I deal with a lot of clients that make a lot of money. Uh, but although they make a lot of money because of their expertise and their educational background and so forth, uh, very few of them truly understand how money works. And if more and more Americans understood how money worked, uh, they would make uh, much better decisions uh, in their financial planning as they, as they move through life uh, and, and into retirement years. Uh, now, uh, what is the income tax status? You have to pay attention to that because not only do you have to look at your personal income tax status, also look at the state that you live in. If you happen to live in a state uh, that not only do you pay federal income taxes, but you also may be paying uh, state income taxes and local income taxes as well, uh, ma making a mortgage decision is going to be totally different than somebody that lives in a state uh, where there are no state income taxes and or local uh, taxes along those lines. So uh, again, all those things are going to play a factor uh, in your decision-making process. Now, let's take a look at a traditional 30-year 30 uh, 30 mortgage. And this is based on today's uh, mortgage rates. 
Um, but so let's look at someone who's uh, purchasing a uh, $450,000 home. Uh, they're going to put down 20% um, as a down payment. So that uh, would be $90,000. Uh, the interest rate on a 30-year mortgage is going to be approximately 4.4%. Uh, and it's going to be a fixed uh, interest rate. And the total mortgage payment is going to be $2,717. Now, let me break down that mortgage payment for you. So out of the $2,717 of mortgage payment, $1,803 will go toward uh, principal and interest. You're going to have $848 going toward taxes, and then $67 are going toward insurance. Uh, now, obviously, uh, at the end of 15 years, uh, there's still going to be just north of $237,000 of uh, principal um, uh, mortgage uh, payment remaining remaining uh, on um, on the mortgage at the end of 15 years. So if you purchase a 30-year mortgage, you start making your 2717 or 1803 dollars toward your PI at the end of 15 years, and I'm and I'm evaluating at the end of the 15-year period because I want you to keep this number in mind. Uh, you would at that point in time, if you wanted to pay off the property at the end of 15 years, uh, you would need uh, $237,236 in order to make that 30-year mortgage a 15-year mortgage. In addition to that, uh, you would have paid just north of $202,000 uh, in interest payments uh, on that mortgage. Uh, and then if you were to stay with that mortgage for 30 years, uh, you would have paid north of $288,000, almost $289,000 of interest payments on that four hundred uh, and fifty thousand dollar mortgage minus the twenty percent down payment. Okay, so now let's take let's go through the same exercise the same exercise on the fifteen year mortgage again four hundred fifty thousand dollars ninety thousand dollars will be the down payment or twenty percent. Um, the the interest rate is going to be a three point seven five nine interest rate. Notice that on the 30-year mortgage, the interest rate is 4.4, which is higher than the 3.75. And the reason why the banking institutions are willing uh, to give you a lower interest rate on a 15-year mortgage than they would on a 30-year mortgage is that they're going to get their principal and interest back a lot sooner than they would in a traditional 30-year mortgage. So they're willing to give you a break along those lines. Now, the payments are going to be higher. Remember, it was 2717 uh, of total payments under the 30-year mortgage. Now it's going to be $3,534. And then the breakdown would be $2,620 toward principal and interest. Remember that it was 1803 under the 30-year mortgage. And then obviously the taxes and the insurance uh, remains uh, the same. Now, uh, at the end of 15 years, the property is totally paid for and you can just walk away, you'll get your deed, and, and you're good to go from that perspective. Um, a total interest paid over that 15 years, uh, because of the fact that you're paying more toward principal in those 15 years, because a mortgage is uh, shorter uh, in length, uh, and, and also the fact that you got a reduction in the interest rate uh, would be approximately $1,111,000 um, uh, $11, um, uh, in interest payments to that mortgage. So obviously, when you look at this scenario, uh, under perfect circumstances, uh, you would definitely choose a 15-year uh, mortgage versus a 30-year mortgage. Now, uh, let's go ahead and, and look at the mortgage scenario uh, through a microscope. And, and remember, one of the things that we try to do with our clients on a regular basis is get them to start looking at their financial decisions through a telescope as opposed to a microscope. Now on an individual basis, you will look at, at, at each decision through a microscopic view, but then prior to making that decision, you have to look at it through a telescope to make certain that whatever decision you're making on one side of the ledger, um, you can understand whether it's gonna have a positive or a negative impact on the other side of the ledger as well. 
So when you look at it through a microscope, what do we see there? Well, uh, we immediately see that over a 30-year period in a 30-year mortgage, uh, the interest that you're going to pay is going to be much higher. So you're going to be paying $288,000 um, in interest payments versus $111,000 uh, that you would have paid on a 15-year on mortgage. So there's a difference of just north of $177,000 uh, in interest payments uh, between a 30-year mortgage and a 15-year mortgage. And then at the end of the day, at the end of the 15 years of mortgages, the 15-year mortgage is totally paid for. So that makes a lot of sense. Uh, and in most cases, you would say, well, you know, I would think, Bert, that now, uh, based on this information, I would rather go with a 15-year mortgage uh, than a 30-year mortgage. And I'll say, well, you know, slow it down a little bit. Uh, let's go ahead now and take a look at the mortgage uh, differential or the mortgage uh, decision uh, through a telescope as opposed to a microscope. And here's where I would begin. Number one, uh, Paul Harvey was a radio show host, uh, very famous. Uh, he actually died, I think it was in 2009. He would be 100 years old today. And, um, and Paul Harvey, you know, was famous. Um, uh, he was, uh, I think he worked for ABC at that time as a radio uh, talk show host. And Paul Harvey had this very deep voice and very slow, methodical voice, and he would tell stories. And, and toward the end of the story, he will say, well, now you need to hear the rest of the story. So that's, where about, that's what we're about to do on this uh, short video webcast today. Let's go, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the rest of the story uh, on the mortgage decision from a telescopic standpoint of view. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the mortgage payment differences. Now, if you notice on the 15-year mortgage, and I'm only talking about the P&I, the principal and interest, because you know the taxes and insurance are going to be the same on either side of the ledger, whether, whether it is a 30-year mortgage or a 15-year mortgage. But you'll see that the 15-year mortgage has a P&I of $2,620 versus $1,803 for a 15-year mortgage. So the arbitrage or the difference uh, between uh, P&I payments um, regarding the 30 years or the 15-year mortgage is $817. Now, one of the issues to consider that we discussed was the propensity to consume, whether the mortgage holder was a saver or a spender, um, uh, whether, they were, whether they were committed or involved, as the bacon and eggs uh, analogy that I gave you. But let's say that we have a mortgage holder who is committed to a savings program. And let's say that we can now take those eight to $817 a month, uh, and let's do the math on an annual basis, and we're going to put that money away for the next 15 to 30 years uh, as part of a uh, mandatory uh, savings program in order to offset the difference between the 30-year mortgage and the 15-year you know, mortgage. So here's what we would do from an investment standpoint. Uh, every year, we're going to take $9,804, which is a difference uh, of $817 per month on, on the mortgage difference, and we're going to invest it. Uh, and, and let's assume that we can get a 6% rate of return. We can get more. We might be able to get less. But at the end of the day, let's say that the average is about 6%. Now, where we can invest the money, there are a number of places uh, that we can invest. Uh, we can invest it in in mutual funds, we can invest it in stocks, we can invest it uh, in, in qualified plants, non-qualified plants. Uh, depending uh, on the year that the property is purchased, will pretty much determine which vehicle you would be using from an investment standpoint. So we're investing $9,804 uh, on an annual basis at a 6% uh, interest rate. And, and, and take a look at this. At the end of 15 years, uh, the account value has north of $251,000. Now, you remember that at the end of 15 years, the 30-year mortgage had a uh, remaining balance 
of $237,000. So the business owner or the, the real estate owner in this case, at the end of 15 years, he or she can make a decision as to what to do. Well, do I take out of my $251,000, do I take uh, $237,000 and pay the home uh, right off the bat at this point in time? And, and now my home will be a 30-year mortgage that was paid off in 15 years? Or do I have other choices? You know, how are my economics? Uh, how are your economics at that point in time? Does it make sense to pay off the mortgage? Um, are you, is your income, has your income increased? Are you paying more in taxes? Does it make sense to continue to uh, manage uh, and take that mortgage deduction on an ongoing basis, uh, maybe for another two, three, four, or five years? So at the end of 15 years, this 30-year uh, mortgage uh, owner uh, has a number of choices that uh, someone that purchased a property for 15 years uh, did not have. Now, then again, that property would have been paid for, but if the income for that individual was higher, then taxes are gonna be higher as well because you no longer, or, or he or she would no longer have that mortgage uh, deduction. Now, if the, if the mortgage uh, owner uh, wants to keep that mortgage for 30 years, and wants to continue to invest the $9,804 for those 30 years, then at the end of 30 years, the account value would be north of $831,000 that he or she can use for retirement purposes, and their mortgage will be paid off at the end of 30 years. So that's a different way uh, of looking at it uh, because at the end of the day, the more leverage you have on your side of the ledger, the better off uh, you're going to be. Now, we all know that life happens and life happens at times that we seldom expect. And believe me, I have been in the financial services industry and I have been running my company now for almost 30 years. Uh, so I've seen a lot of things happen along those lines. And what are some of the issues uh, that you need to consider or that could happen in the future that could have a negative impact uh, on the way that you manage, or you man you manage uh, your finances and that you manage uh, your mortgage. Um, what happens if you are uh, five years into your mortgage payments and you lose your job? You know, I had clients back um, in the early 2000s uh, that were working in Silicon Valley and when that dot-com era went away and the market crashed, uh, they lost their jobs. As a matter of fact, some of these clients were actually prepaying their mortgages. You know, they had purchased a 30-year mortgage. Uh, they were making an extra one to two payments per year toward P&I, toward principal and interest, and they were uh, reducing those mortgage payments uh, and the uh, mortgage debt uh, significantly. Now, once they lost their jobs, uh, they went back to the bank and said, you know, I have been making prepayments. I've been uh, accelerating my payment program to pay off my mortgage in time. Uh, do you think that you might be able to give me a break over the next, you know, six months to a year where I don't have to make mortgage payments because of the fact that I have prepaid uh, uh, so many uh, years of that mortgage uh, and I did so uh, up until now? Uh, what do you think the mortgage company would say? The mortgage company would say, absolutely not. Your payment is due next month. So from a business perspective, you have no uh, leverage whatsoever. What if you become disabled? Um, by the way, over 54% of all bankruptcy, bankruptcies uh, and foreclosures in the United States are due to bankruptcies. Uh, so what if you become disabled and you can no longer work? Is it easier to pay uh, a $3,500 mortgage or a $2,700 mortgage. Uh, so you have to also consider those things that you have no control over uh, when it comes to making mortgage uh, decisions. Uh, property values. What if your property value decreases? You know, it doesn't matter how much equity you have, you know, the first person that loses uh, is the property owner or the mortgage uh, holder. Not the mortgage holder, because that would be the bank um, uh, or the lender, but it would be the mortgage uh, payer would be the first one uh, to lose when a property uh, value uh, decreases 
because of the equity involved in the property. Uh, what if you have to go through a family divorce? You know, are you going to have the leverage? Are you going to have the funds to be able to separate the assets? So a lot of those things uh, play a major role. And this is one of the reasons why I always try to get my clients uh, to get their equity outside of their walls uh, into an investment account or into a savings program that will give them the leverage that they would not have otherwise. And then last but not least, uh, you know, any family emergencies uh, that may uh, come upon at some, po some point in time in the future. So those are things that are very critical to understand. And those are things that uh, we need to be able to pay attention to. You need to be able to pay attention to because life happens and, and none of us un understand or can see the future unless you happen to have a crystal ball. Now, the other issue to consider is, you know, mortgage leveraging. And, and with that, you know, let's talk a little bit about equity position. Let's talk about mortgage position and let's talk about leveraging position. And, and this is going to be a very important part of the conversation for you because it's going to allow you to think outside of the box. Uh, remember, even a broken clock is right twice a day. So if you're really going to make a, a commitment to a mortgage uh, program or even a mortgage acceleration program, then you have to make certain that, that you look at all the avenues and all the different uh, issues and concerns that could negatively impact uh, your mortgage decision. So the first one uh, that we're going to look at would be the equity position. And, and when you look at equity uh, in a mortgage, let's say that you have a home that you purchased uh, you know, for half a million dollars and you owe 250,000. So you have equity in the property of $250,000 uh, at any given time. Uh, and now, uh, the one question I, I ask all of my clients is, well, what do you think the internal rate of return is on that equity? And they ponder and they think, and they'll say, well, Bert, I don't know, maybe you know, the same value as the property? Uh, no, the answer from an economic perspective, the rate of return on equity is always zero. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, you see, the, the value of the property is going to either increase or decrease or stay level, regardless whether you have a mortgage on it or not. So if you're fully amortized on a half a million dollar property, uh, other than the 20% down payment that you made, that property value is going to increase or decrease uh, whether you're fully amortized or whether your mortgage, uh, your, your mortgage is totally paid off. So you have to consider leverage when it comes to that. Now, the other issue to consider is, you know, mortgage position. Now, always think of it this way. The mortgage payments that you're making to the bank or to the financial institution every month is an asset to them. The mortgage payments that you're making is a liability to you. So from a, uh, from a mortgage position, the lender is always in a much, much better position than you are because they have the tools and they have the techniques to be able to do things with those mortgages like fractional reserves. And we're not going to get into that right now. That gives them the ability to increase their internal rate of return on those investments significantly. So it is very important for you to try to get as much of your equity out of your home and be able to invest it somewhere else. And then last but not least would be the leveraging position. Uh, and, and where are the leverages between a lender and a purchaser? Now, the leverages, the leverage differences are incredible. You see, um, if you have to ask for permission to do something on your property, do you really own it? So as long as you have a mortgage on your property, the lender has a stronger position. And by the, by the way, the, the bigger your equity in the property, the more leverage the bank has over you and the less leverage you have over the bank. What do I mean by that? Well, let's say that you lose your job and now the bank has to foreclose on your property. Let's say during the major market debacle of 2008, the real estate and the stock market debacle, there were a lot of foreclosures that were taking place. And let's say that you had a half a million dollar property and you owed only half a million dollars. So you had 
$400,000 of equity. But there are thousands and thousands of other investors and mortgage holders that uh, were somewhere in the same. Uh, some owed more, some owed less. But when it comes to liquidating those mortgage positions, which the banks always have the first lien position on those mortgages, which ones do you think are easier to liquidate from a banking strategic design? Uh, a piece of property uh, where it's totally leveraged and mortgaged uh, uh, to the max or a property that has a tremendous amount of equity assigned to it. Uh, the latter is always the decision that the banks are going to utilize. So you may have a next door neighbor that is fully mortgaged. He or she may actually keep that property longer than you would because the bank would rather foreclose on your property because of the equity value differential and the fact, the fact that it would be much, much uh, easier and faster uh, to be able to, to sell away uh, or to transfer the, the deeds uh, from one lender to the other under those conditions. So you always have to pay attention to that. Now tax leverage uh, works the same way. So when you look at the mortgage interest, uh, the mortgage payment, and then obviously the provisional income calculations are very, very critical. Uh, yes, when you have mortgage, uh, you're obviously going to have some deductions. It's going to have an impact on your AGI, which is your adjustable gross income. So obviously that's important. And there's a big difference between the 30 and the 15 year. And by the way, just as a footnote, um, remember that over a 10 year period, uh, anywhere between 75% to 85% of all the mortgage payments that you make, uh, whether it's a 15 year mortgage or a 30 year mortgage, the vast majority of those payments are gonna go toward uh, interest first. Uh, so that's important to note. Uh, mortgage payments, um, you know, the longer the payment is, uh, inflation will work on your favor. I'll give, you, I'll give you an example. I bought my first home in 1983. At that point in time, obviously, you know, I was, um, uh, I'm a Marine, so I was able to use uh, a VA loan to purchase my, my property at that point in time. I was only able, I only needed to put 5% down. So my mortgage payments uh, back in 1983 uh, were $764. I'll never forget what I paid for my first mortgage. Now, back then, $764 was a fairly high mortgage payment. Now, fast forward 30 years, what do you think it is today? Is $767 of mortgage payments a high mortgage payment or a low mortgage payment? Well, inflation caught up and kept on going. So it's a lot easier to pay a $764 mortgage payment today than it was um, back in 1983 when I purchased my home. And then at the end of the day, provisional income calculation. The more deductions that you get on your side of the ledger, the better off you're gonna be. And provisional income calculations will determine uh, what percentage of your social security benefits and retirement uh, will be taxed. And when provisional calculations are taken into consideration, you know, the IRS is gonna take, uh, is gonna consider you know, 50% of your social security benefits. They're gonna add your ordinary income taxes. And maybe if you're still working or if you have a part-time job or if you're taking withdrawals from your IRAs and your 401ks uh, to that, uh, they're gonna add capital gains um, uh, that you may, re may be receiving because of the, st the sale of a stock or a piece of property or whatever that may be. And then last but not least, interest from municipal bond funds. Although municipal bond funds uh, come to you on a federal income tax basis, they get added on to the provisional income calculation to determine uh, what, percentage of, what percentage of your social security benefits will be taxed in retire. By the way, most Americans uh, think that they're not gonna pay taxes in, um, uh, on their social security benefits, and the vast majority of them will because they have not done proper uh, provisional income calculation planning in order to mitigate those liabilities uh, in the future. So uh, the more uh, deductions you can get, and mortgage deduction is one of the biggest one, uh, the lower your adjustable gross income will be on an annual basis, and the less taxes you're going to be able to pay uh, in the future, will, which may be very, very helpful to you and to your family. Now, uh, final thoughts. Um, 
uh, when it comes to making a decision between a 30-year mortgage and a 15-year mortgage. Number one, uh, mortgage decisions cannot be made in a vacuum. You have to study them, you have to understand them, you have to reach out to someone like me um, that specializes in retirement strategies and, and who is a tax planner along those lines because uh, I can help you uh, and you can help yourself if you know someone that has the ability to do the same things that I do uh, in order to help you uh, make the right mortgage decision through a telescope view as opposed to a microscope view. Uh, the second issue is, you know, you can borrow to find a mortgage. You can borrow to find an education for your children, but you can't borrow to fund your retirement planning. So the sooner that you start putting money away toward your retirement, the better off you're going to be. So on a 30-year mortgage, uh, most of the time, because of the arbitrage, between the 15-year P&I and the 30-year P&I, if you are consistent and if you are committed to creating a savings program, down, now you can have your cake and eat it too, and you can not only pay down your mortgage, have the leverage to decide when to pay it off, uh, if at all, but you're also gonna have the ability to start your retirement program a lot sooner than you would have on a 15-year mortgage because those individuals that want to pay their property off, property off in 15 years, many a times uh, do not do any retirement planning uh, up until that point in time where 15 years have gone by and they have already paid their mortgage off. And now they have to start uh, pursuing their retirement goals and objectives uh, from zero after 15 years. So those are things that are very critical to understand. Now, obviously, I want to leave you with a call to action, uh, which is very important. And, and the call to action is simple. It's, you know, it's the definition of insanity. And, and to me, the definition of insanity is always doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a, a different result. So unless you do proper uh, planning for yourself and your family, you're going to continue to do the same things that you did yesterday and the day before and that you're doing today. Uh, and then obviously, uh, you know, having a customized tax preferred retirement blueprint uh, may be suitable for you and your family as well. Now, not everyone qualifies for that. Uh, so uh, what I like about the customized tax preferred retirement blueprint is that it takes a lot of these issues uh, into consideration you know, mortgage payments, uh, mortgage leverage, uh, cash flow analysis, um, uh, where to invest the money, uh, all the different, uh, the three different taxable buckets. Uh, we do social security calculations. We do Medicare calculations. We do retirement planning strategic calculations. We do tax-free retirement planning to make certain that at time of retirement, at time of retirement you can legally divorce the IRS in retirement and do so without any issues and or concerns. Now, please feel free to reach out to me uh, if you wanna have a discussion and you can do so um, by reaching out to me and, and calling me at 786-766-1042. We can schedule a video conference, a 30 minute video conference at no cost or obligation to either you uh, or your family or a business partner. If you want to discuss any business uh, issues uh, and concerns, you can also email me at bert, B E R T dot Salazar, S A L A Z A R at Cambridge FP LLC dot com. Uh, or you can also email me at bert, B E R T at bert Salazar dot com. Or you can always visit my website, uh, which is www. Uh, CambridgeFPLLC.com. Let me go ahead and just close uh, this uh, screen real quick, uh, and so you can I can bring back up the. Um, there you go. So I can bring this back up, uh, and and just want to take a minute to to close it off. I can't thank you enough uh, for giving me a little bit of your time, uh, and remember, uh, we do webinars on a, on a weekly basis. We do seminars. Uh, as well on a monthly basis. Our webinars are usually held uh, the third, this, uh, every other Thursday of every month, uh, except for the month of August uh, and December. And we also do podcasts because uh, we're true believers uh, that information without education always leads to failure. 
Uh, so my goal and that of my firm is, is to kind of help all of you change the way that you see things. Because when you change the way that you see things, the things that you see change. Again, thank you so very much for giving me a few minutes today and, and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye.